People always ask how I balance my family life with 400 shows a year. I'm just doing what I love with the people I love. It's my magic life. I like Wes Isley. I like everything about him. All right, and we're live. Tonight, it's a little different. It's just Natalie and I. Yep. And, uh... Day before Thanksgiving. So why not? I don't yeah. want to bother anybody. Everybody's got holiday plans. Plus, well, yeah, it is a big travel day for Thanksgiving. Plus, we haven't talked about anything us-related since having everybody else on. So I'm thinking maybe do this every three weeks. Just once a month, just have me and you sit down and just talk about what we got going on. Yeah. Because it's Wes Isley's magic life. I mean, we got a cast and crew of five people now. Right. There's a lot of stuff going on constantly. I think that's a good idea. So, there it is, guys. That's the mandate. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me and Natalie every every three weeks. So, uh, and in another three weeks, it'll be Christmas Eve. Hey, guess what? Let's do it again. Is that three weeks yeah, from I think now? so. Oh, gosh. We got a lot to do. I think so. I have it on the schedule. Like, it's a Wednesday before Christmas Eve or something. Yeah. But I have it scheduled out that it's me and you again. Oh, okay. So. Well, good. Anyway, we do have some people coming up. Uh, I have an actress friend of mine coming up next week. I have a uh, another comedian magician in the works. And uh, a lot of people in the works, but it's the holidays, and I'm kind of putting out feelers. I don't want to lock anybody down right now. So Okay. But this thing's awesome. We are growing. The podcast is doing really good. Um, Bangladesh is our newest um, listener. I don't know if it's one person or a town. I, I can imagine a town of people in a theater listening to my podcast in Bangladesh. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> it might just be one it's dude just in the basement. one person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's cool. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so we wanted to catch you up on some stuff. So uh, the babies, oh my gosh, they're doing great. They, we were thinking that this was going to be awful. We're going to have yes. twins. It doesn't run our family. We have nobody to add. Just like magic. We have nobody to ask, how do you handle twins on the road? But we have nobody in life to a- answer, ask the question. We don't know how, we don't have anybody to ask, how do you ha- handle one baby on the road? But we had done it before, so we thought we'd be all right. And then two babies on the road, forget it. There's nobody, we don't know anybody that takes one baby, let alone two babies. But knock on wood. So. These babies aren't colicky. They're, they're doing great. They're awesome. The only time they get a little cranky is before bedtime uh, before the before bedtime th- feeding right yeah and right before and right after feedings because then they have to poo it's so they get stomach crowd oh my, my belly my belly i'm better yeah and, and then, then you, and then there's lots of smiles the smiles are new and they're so adorable big old wide smiles i'm loving that but anyway they're two months tomorrow yeah no today Two months today. Two months. Do I have it in my notes? It's tomorrow. Sorry. I don't no, have the dates no. in front of me. No, 25th. Two and, months uh, today. Time has flown by. Yes. It really has. So, in one aspect it has. In another aspect, it's like, it seems like forever ago that we were at the hospital and we brought him home. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, wow, two months already? That's, That's because crazy. we went two months without sleep. Oh, you think so? <laughs> you know, we're getting sleep. The babies, the babies sleep at nighttime. The babies do really, really well. I'm really happy. Yeah. But we're on edge. Every little cough, every little snort, every little everything, we're both awake. And it's... Well, they say the highest risk for SIDS is in the first four months. Oh, I got two more months, isn't it? Exactly. So every little coo, every little cough, every little movement, I wake up. And Natalie's out of the bed darting. Or across the room. like Well, a, if, if I hear a little, I'm like, oh gosh, what was that? Because I, I just don't know. You, you don't know. So These babies will listen to this later and know, <laughs> hey, she's not joking, kids. She was up every second. Yeah. Last night, she laid down, put her head on my chest, got up, went to check on you. <laughs> got laid back down, laid, put and her head on my chest, a... and went to check on you. Kids, when you listen to this later on, she is not joking. Yeah. Within 30 minutes, she was up at least six times. Well, when they're trying to fall asleep, they both want their binkies in their mouth constantly. And they lose them, and so they start crying. And they don't stop crying until the binky's back in the mouth. Now, when they spit them out after they've fallen asleep, they could care less. They don't wake her, up. I told her we need to rubber band them to their heads. Yeah, we need some, they need to come up with some sort of band that keeps <laughs> the binkies in the mouth. 
But I guess... I that's guess a choking that's, hazard. Yeah, probably. Or it's, you know, something's wrong with it. But I don't know. The way our kids suck on binkies, I don't think they'd have an issue with it, so... And but, Lana? Lana has been awesome with them. She's been really sweet. She's been a wonderful big sister. She always wants to help. I was, you know... We built up the anticipation of having two, like Wes said, and it hasn't been as bad. And then I also built up anticipation on myself of, oh gosh, there's two. And I don't want Lana feeling left out. I don't want her feeling um, not loved. I want her and the babies to have a bond, you know? And I'm like, maybe that won't happen right away. But I think it has. I think it's, I think it's, I don't think she feels left out. At least I hope not. She doesn't seem like she does. And we really try to keep her in the loop and keep her involved as much as she wants to be with the babies. And we want to be good parents. We want to, we want Lana to have a good childhood. We don't want to force her to no. constantly help us and stuff. But right. there's times where it's like, hey, help me. Put the pacifier in that kid's mouth. I right. just sat down. Yeah. And she's more than willing. If she's Yeah. When she's closer, she's like, sure. And she's been real sweet, and she wants to hold them all the time. So much so that there's been a few times where it's like, no, 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 not right now. They've been cranky, and they just fell asleep. And then she's disappointed that she can't pick them up, but it's like, <laughs> I just got peace. Come on. <laughs> well, she doesn't mind picking them up when they're crying and screaming, trying no. to calm them down and give them love. No, I even put a post up on Facebook about that. Julian was cranky one, one evening. It was towards evening, which seems to be, you know... Between their last two evening feedings, they seem a little cranky for some reason. But he wouldn't. He just wouldn't give it up, and he had gotten overtired. I do believe he wouldn't fall. He wouldn't go to sleep, and then he got so tired he just didn't know what to do with himself. And I couldn't get him to go to sleep. And Lana just comes up to me. I didn't ask her. She just said, "Mommy, can I try? Can I hold him? Can I try?" And I said, "Okay, but you know, you when you're." done you just let me know and I'll take him back and she took him to the couch and she laid down with him and I don't know what she did but it got real quiet (laughs) and I go in there and he is conked out in his sister's arms and she's just smiling ear to ear I did it mommy (laughs) I thought that was so sweet but a thing I didn't know because my brother is nine years older than me my sister is 18 years older than me so I didn't realize how siblings can help but they can also check out like grandparents uh-huh like they can swoop in have fun and leave we don't make her stay down here with us if she wants to go to her playroom yeah. and have free time boom yeah but that's kind of like a like a grandparent they oh, can yeah. swoop in have fun and swoop out yeah yeah she and there's been times where she's holding them they start to cry and she goes here mommy <laughs> Yep, <laughs> Just later. like a grandparent. I'm like, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I'm not expecting her to babysit them or be responsible for them. No. Yeah. When she's older, she'll be a great babysitter. But right now, I don't want to put that much responsibility on her. We had, several people, we had several people tell us that, you know, I'm the older and do not make your kid be a babysitter. I'm the oldest kid in the family. Do not do that to him. You don't have a childhood. You end up being the babysitter. And do not do that to her. My sister babysat us. She was put, quote unquote, in charge when my parents left. But maybe that's different. But not all the time. Maybe that's different. Yeah, maybe. And I don't know these people's background stories. I'm just telling you what they told me. Yeah. Don't do that to your daughter. Anyway, people, we won't. We won't. No. Um, But Lana's awesome with them. The kids are great. Everything's great. In other news, <laughs> we had shows all October. October was our first money-making month of the season. We've made money this year. I mean, we sold a lot of my magic tricks that I... The, the trick that I created called Flip that I did on Penn & Teller. We sold that internationally all over the world. Um, and I was filling orders July, August, September, October. And... Um, January and February were great months. That was great. And then... But then COVID hit. And yeah. then October was a money-making month. That was the first month we were in the black. We felt like we were just not quite, but just about back to normal. That's how many shows we had. Yeah. It was just about back to normal. Uh, um, a normal year would have been more shows after that farm in the evenings. Yeah. And we did have a couple shows in addition to the farm. We had, We had a... 
A few, yeah. Several, several. Several, yeah. But it just, it wasn't quite the same. And they were all private. But. Nothing I could promote. No. But it was, it felt so good. Yeah. <laughs> it felt yeah. so nice. And uh, the the worst part about that, though, the worst part about being busy and having the twins on the road and all that was taking two vehicles. Yeah. Natalie has to either follow me or I follow her from show to show. I'm driving the big magic van with all the equipment in it. And she's got a, a Highlander with yeah. with the two kids in the back seat, Lana in the way back. Yeah. And the boss behind the steering wheel. <laughs> There just aren't enough seat belts in uh, the van, so we had enough for one baby, <laughs> but not for two. So we're well, taking. Well, we had enough for two baby. Well, Lana, a baby and a babysitter would have fit, but two car seats and a babysitter, two car seats and Lana won't fit. Yeah, even if you brought a babysitter, you still need another seat belt put in yeah. the back. But the two the car seats take up more room than I realized. I had forgotten. It's been eight years. Huh. Right. So, um, yeah, it would be a, a... Lana would be smushed probably in the back seat. It would have been workable, you know, to go to the farm and back. It would have been fine to take just the van if we had another seatbelt. But you bring a babysitter along, there's not enough room. And the other thing is, um, I did this for 13 years by myself, I think is what I figured it out. Yeah. I've been in business since 1996. I'm making yeah. 13 years and doing my job or something. We met in 2005. But I've been doing this since 1996, so... Right. So you're in business for nine years. When we met... Okay, so I was on the road for nine years. years by myself, I guess. I don't know. Ten years. I probably started, I came, started coming with you in 2006, so two, ten years. But ten years, I was on the road by myself doing all these shows. And the getting to and coming home... That's the boring part. I had to go to the store today, and now we live only 45 minutes from where I needed to go. Same amount of time as before, just different kind of ride. Yeah, it's just inter- it's just interstate, just straight, which is awesome, but without anybody in the car with you. Even with the podcast going or the radio going, it's just straight. There's nothing to look at. It's just interstate. Because it's boring. And, man, I was bored. And we're not driving as much as we used to, so... You're not used I'm to not it. I'm not used to it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm finding myself biting my fingernails and, and having bad habits behind the wheel just to have something to do. Usually I'm talking to Natalie or, you know, we're sharing a story or really into something or into a podcast together and laughing yeah, and, start, and looking at each other. and Yeah, start talking about what they were talking about or something. Yeah, yeah, I mean, same here. I'm either listening to the radio or having conversations with an eight-year-old, which can be... <laughs> I spy with my little eye. Yeah. They can be very interesting or they can be very monotonous and repetitive. It depends on the day. <laughs> Last night she said, Mommy, the car uh, is all lit up on the inside. It's so lit up with those buttons up front. We can play I Spy. It was pitch black outside. Yeah. And we're like, mm, No, honey, we're listening to the radio. Mom, I spy with my little... No, Lana, we're not playing the game. And she just thought if she just started it that we right. were in the game. That's how you started it. No. Uh, no, we'll put on Christmas music for you here. But um, I think she talked over the Christmas music the whole way home anyway. So. I can't hear when she, she was, does that. She was shot out of a cannon last night. I don't know what happened to her that's, last night. That's we went, right. We went Christmas shopping. Maybe she got excited about I, that. I think she did. I think she very much did. It made her realize how close Christmas is. We're actually going Christmas shopping. Woohoo! So, but anyway, yeah. anyway, so that's the worst part taking two vehicles. Yes. So, for years, I don't know how many years, for years, I've been telling Natalie I would love to have an RV to take the family of three to shows. But that's always been one of those things that's, yeah, yeah, down the road, you know, down the road, sure, that would be a great idea. Sure, sure. Right now, we're fine, you know. Well, now that we have five in the crew, I finally got her on my side. I was very much so not on your side at first. Very much so. I was like, no, we just need to get like a 15 passenger fan yeah. that has more seats and we'll just take out a couple seats and make sure it's real long and we'll just, that'll be plenty of seats for all five of us plus a babysitter. It'll be fine. We even, did it with Lana. We can do it with these two. <laughs> even with five people, she didn't want an RV. And I'm like, Natalie, we're not a normal family going to 
Walmart and then going home or going to uh, wherever, going to the mall and then going home. We're driving six hours in the morning, eight hours at night. We're on the road all day long. Let's make the ne most negative part about our job, the travel part, let's make that fun. Let's make that comfortable. And I loved that idea. My problem was talking about what happens when we have a show in D.C.? What happens when we have a show in downtown Richmond? What happens when we have to pull up to somebody's house? You're showing up in an RV. You know, it, it, you're not just in a van. We sometimes have enough trouble parking our van. Now you want to do an RV? And then the RVs, now I've, I've said yes to an RV. And now I'm just I'm smacking my head because I'm going, oh my gosh. Because we started out with like a 24-footer. That's what we were looking at. Now, all of a sudden, we're looking at 36. One we looked at the other day was 40 feet long. And I'm going, Wes, oh my goodness. Okay, I said yes to an RV, but this is getting, like, huge. I don't know what to do. I, I, how are you going to... You're driving. I guess you're going to be the one driving when we show up to shows because I don't know how we're going to park it at some places. But There'll we, be plenty of places where it's fine, but I'm just thinking about those places that it's not fine. Yeah. What are we going to do? Theaters will be fine. Our resorts will be fine. All of those shows will be fine. Right. Um, but you have... What about corporate events in, in cities? Right. Well, you... Hey, can you guys have somebody? Can you have the hotel email us and say where I can park a 37-foot vehicle? Right. Can I unload on the sidewalk and then go? And that sounds all well and good, and we can certainly try, but I guarantee there's going to be shows that we show up to. Because we've asked people before, can you save us a, a spot? We need a spot. We cannot fit in garages, and we have an extended cab van. It's very long. Can you save us a parking spot, make sure we have somewhere to park? And we show up, and they're like, oh, my goodness, I forgot. And so <laughs> it's, we've made it work. But this is an RV. How are we going to make that work? So... I guess we'll deal with it when it comes, but I'm still nervous. I'm overwhelmed. Well, here's the thing. So our neighbors went with us, um, and they have an RV. They go to RV shows. They're really into RVs, and I'm like, great. I know how to drive them. That's, that's all I know. I don't know how to empty any of the tanks. I don't know how to turn on the generator. I don't know how yeah. to open the slides. I mean, the people did it. I think they just pushed a button. Yeah. But I don't know if they had to crank anything or open up some kind of thing and do some. I don't know. Right. But I know how to drive them. So he went with us to show us some stuff and show us around. Good and the bad of the things. So oh, you don't want this one because it has such and such. Oh, this is nice. This is, this will work for you. So were we there eight hours? I felt like we were there eight hours. We were there for a long... Uh, it was a long day. I don't think we were there for quite eight hours. Twelve to seven. 12 sure. to 5. It was dark. Yeah. It had gotten dark. We were there five hours. It felt like longer. Um, yeah. It, <laughs> might, it might have been a little bit before 12. I don't remember. But yes. It was It was a long day. We were just... Yeah. Okay. And then we had such a large group. They apparently... I've never been to these places, but they like to take people on their um, golf carts, drive yeah. them around. But we walked everywhere. Well, we had five and they had four. So it was nine of us walking around. Yeah. And, um, well... The babies weren't walking. We were... I was, yeah. Anyway, um, so they showed us a vehicle that was 125000 It was nice. It was great. It was 30, very nice. 36 feet. Then they showed us one that was... Like 360? Uh, yeah, one of them was 360, but one of them it was like a 125, 170. Then it was like, the most expensive one was the three, was it 360 or four? Well, the second place we went to, that one with the toy hauler, I think was like four fifty or something like that. So we maybe even... I don't know. Maybe that wasn't. I don't. I don't remember. Either way, all of them were really nice. I was. Well, four hundred fifty thousand dollars for an RV. It better be nice. Yeah, well, that's more expensive than our house. So. So. <laughs> um, the problem. The problem is they want to show them to you with all those slides, slides. open. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, first thing you can do for me is to close those slides because we will open them. I'm sure we'll come home and the kids will want to sit in the car or we're tired. We just want to take a nap or something and open it up in a parking lot somewhere and just relax a little bit. What I, I don't know. I don't know. Or go to a, at one of our resorts, open it up. I don't know. Have a picnic. I don't know. 
but 99% of the time we're driving down the road, those things are gonna be closed. So don't show it to me open, show it to me closed, please. And we went to two dealerships side by side and both of them seemed hesitant to do that. <laughs> and um, well, it, it, it was problematic to do that. They they had to have the key or they had or you know okay we can run it on the generator all oh, the battery's low somebody ran the battery down can't do it but plus I think it was oh no it's not gonna look as good like they want you to have the wow this is amazing feeling when you're looking at their at the RVs so that you really want it and when they're open wow they are amazing but you close them and they're still amazing but you realize how little room you're gonna have to walk up and down and everything which really how much walking up and down are you gonna be doing when you're riding anyway but if you want a cup of coffee if you want to go to the bathroom want to get something out of the fridge right you want to be able to do it right. one of them and it was over a hundred and sixty thousand it was over a hundred and i would say it's over a hundred eighty thousand dollars once the slides are closed you couldn't open up the refrigerator well you couldn't open up very far you yeah you'd have to plan the size of the stuff that you put in the fridge and if yeah. a drink slid to the back i don't know that you'd be able to get it out you just bring your little grabber with you and you, <laughs> you shouldn't you paying two hundred thousand dollars for an rv yeah you should no, be able to open up the refrigerator yeah and um that was a problem and another problem was we were planning on putting our regular show our stand-up show our family show our our A show. Our small if you, show. If you don't get illusions, it's our main show. Now we change tricks in and out, but it's our main money maker. We were planning on putting that, gutting the bedroom and just making that a storage area. Yeah. Well, a lot of them you can't take the bed out because the bed as actually the frame wooden bed is protecting the water tank underneath. Or some or sort it's of protecting electrical, electrical stuff boxes or... or something. So you can't really have that as an open floor. Okay. Well, I'll take the mattress out. And we'll just stack the equipment in that room. Okay, and I can lay this around the bed and I can put this around the bed. Oh, wait, we didn't close the slides in this one. When you close the slides, there is no foot space around that bed on either Not, side. Well, just in the, at the foot of the bed, there's no space. You can't get past the bed. You'd have to open up the slide in order to unload and reload. And so a couple of them, it was you couldn't get past... Um, you wouldn't be able to get past the bathroom with anything in your arms with the slides closed. You had to go through the bathroom to even put anything that, in it. That was one. And one of them was just, it's just the hallway and the bathroom opens and you just have this little tiny area. You're not going to be able to carry stuff back. You have to open the slide in order to unload and, and reload. Load. Right. Which is also a problem if you're parking in a downtown area and they get you on the side of the street how are you going to open your slides unload your show when cars street. are going past you right <laughs> you see what i'm talking about now <laughs> so anyway and the bells and whistles in these things we're so overwhelmed in a million different choices it's where it, i feel like it's more choices than a home and then yeah you have those choices but then you also have to think about all the upkeep the upkeep is overwhelming too just having to okay we're going to be using this all year round well so you don't want to winterize it. Okay, so when you're home for a couple of days and it's cold, you're going to have to plug it into the house. Well, now we're going to need a plug-in installed in our house for an RV, you know. So you have to figure out somewhere you're going to park it that's close enough for the plug-in. And all the upkeep of the RV is just overwhelming as well. It's going to be really nice going back and forth to shows, but it's going to be a lot of work. I, I don't mean, think the plug-in thing is a situation like you think it is. I think it is. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think, know. I see, well, I don't know where you're going to park it and have a plug-in is what I'm saying. But we, we'll be able to figure that out. I'm just talking about upkeep. You know, you have to empty the tanks. You have to make sure your roof is inspected every year for the whatever the stuff he said oh, was on he it. he said six months. I said, I what? thought he said every year. I think he said every six months would be best. Well, honey... If you had looked on Facebook Marketplace and other places that are selling RVs, a lot of them say 
roof leaks. roof leaks. Yeah. Yeah. So I you might I, I would might take his <sighs> word for. It. I mean, you can talk to Matt, ask him how often he does his. But I'm just saying, it's a, it's upkeep on top of everything else. Anyway. Ah, oh, it's overwhelming. So <laughs> I finally got Natalie on my side. We spent five to eight hours at this place. We and now no I'm idea. overwhelmed. <laughs> now she's overwhelmed. So I, I will never get one. Oh. But I put one on will. Facebook. I put a post on Facebook. Yes. Of Lana homeschooling in there. Wink, wink. She was reading the owner's manual. And yeah. Lana was, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. So it looked just... like she was homeschooling. There was another one of us behind the wheel. It looked like I was driving and Natalie was passenger. We were just posing for fun. Next to the RVs that we were looking at. Yeah. And what did my post say? It says, since we are now a family of five, we decided we need more room to go to shows. RV life slash magic life. It'll make potty breaks, food stops, and homeschooling so much easier on the road. That is all true. That is 100% true. However. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here's the thing. People started saying, congratulations on your new RV. And I was like, what? And Wes was confused too, so I read it again. And I'm going, yeah, you know what, honey? It doesn't say that you bought an RV, but it doesn't sound like you didn't buy an RV either. So <laughs> we did not buy an RV. <laughs> how, many, how many comments and likes does it have? Um, 345 reactions and 85 comments. That's on the one page. Guys, I have six Facebook accounts. Right. This thing blew up. My brother called. Yeah. Um, my mom asked. Your mom asked. Uh, Express Copy and Graphics, our sponsor, congratulated me. Yeah. One of my, my friend, Brian Bowling, congratulated me. Our, Ron. Our, both our neighbors. Yes. Ron Schneider congratulated me. Um, boy, who else? Just who else? friends, magic friends, and Tina. Yeah, yeah. she sent me a private message. Yeah. I had several private messages on, online um, through Messenger and things as well. And still, today the phone rang, and the first thing the guy said was, Hey, congratulations at RV. I got a question. Are you talking about, buy you about that RV? post? No, yeah. we didn't get an RV. Yeah. So, sorry. We're just looking. We started looking. That is it. We started looking. We're excited about the options. We took pictures just for fun. And, I mean, also to, to remember what we looked at. And, but read um, the post again. I didn't mean anything negative by it. Since we are now a family of five, we decided we need to make we needed more room to go to shows. True Arby, statement. RV life, magic life. It'll make potty breaks, food stops, and homeschooling so much easier on the road. So think about it: five people in the car plus a babysitter, which may be Natalie's niece, is a babysitter. Anytime somebody has to get up to go to the bathroom, we don't have to pull over and find a, a rest area. That keeps us on the highway 30, 30 minutes sometimes of those potty breaks can take just for a potty break. Uh, stopping at a, a Sheets or a Wawa or some local big franchise uh, gas station just to get some sodas for the road. Not only is, is it more expensive at those gas stations, but I mean, that's another 30 minutes on the road. Uh, I told Natalie, if I need a cup of coffee, we don't have to stop at some coffee place and pay $5 for a cup. We can get a Keurig in there and I got fresh coffee all day long. So it's it's going to be great. We know it's going to be great, but we're overwhelmed with the possibilities. Yeah. And we looked at 34, 36, 40 footers. Uh, the, toy the toy hauler, hauler. had a, a garage in the back. They called it a toy hauler because you could take an ATV or a golf cart and park it in the back. Yeah, the back comes down and it's a ramp. And it's a garage area. It's just a big box in the back of the RV. You still have your, your living room area, your bathroom area your kitchen area, your bed, your bedroom area, yeah. and then behind the bedroom area is just a big open room. So then we were like, oh, that's great. We can use illusions in there. And we wouldn't have to drag a trailer behind us. Which is going to cause that 34, 36 footer to be even longer. Right. But that makes us have a 40 foot all the time. Right. So even when you didn't need to have illusions, you still have illusions. Which, I mean... Yeah, but it makes the parking situation, again, it, what, what do we do? But it was really neat because, I mean, now it's so easy right. to load in and out. And it had a second door in the back, which is even nicer because like then you can get to the... It wasn't um, the garage door that, that swung down. No. It this was, was like a, a small door that you could walk a in. A side door, yeah. yeah. And you could go in and, and 
yeah, the side door is to the toy hauler, but you could go in and have easier access to the bedroom area where we'd have our show stored as well. So we wouldn't have to traipse through the whole RV and get past with all the slides in and everything, which was nice. I mean, it was very nice. And plus, it ha- I mean, the toy hauler part had a TV back there. It had two benches, which would fold out and make a big bed. And it also had a bunk bed that would come down from the ceiling. Or you would fold down, the, the bunk bed goes up in the ceiling, and then you fold the benches down to the bed, and that goes up to the ceiling too. So you have the whole floor open. And when we say up stuff. in the ceiling, it goes up into a holding area. It, it goes, doesn't take yeah. up ceiling space, so you have to duck under it. No, it's, it's, I can stand up straight. A uh, six foot three person could stand up straight. It's amazing. It's up there. So it's, yes, I really liked it. And, it. and the RV part was really nice too. It just scares me how long it is. But I do, I do like that one. And it had um, the TV in the storage area. Right. That's it had a, big, a TV in the bedroom. It had a TV in the living room. It had a TV up front for uh, above our heads. Right. Um, I don't know how many people had slept with those two beds in the back. Because they were big beds. Right. I don't, I two, don't know. Two, four, six, eight, you know, 10 or 12 people. I, that would, you could cram in there easy. Possibly. But um, that might have been the $450,000 one, huh? I, I don't think it was. I think that was surprisingly Cheaper. low. Yeah. Um, one more but thing about the anyway, RVs yeah. before I get off the subject. They were showing us different things, and they didn't care about prices. They were just showing us stuff, and we didn't care about prices because we're just looking to see what we want, and then we'll figure out prices. But um, one of them was 29 foot, and it yeah. made no sense. And I was scratching my head, and the sales guy was no help. I'm like, no, tell me. What am I missing in this one? Right. And Nothing. he was like, he was like, oh, it's got everything. You right. can't, dude. It's missing ten feet. What well, is it missing? I mean, like the one had a bathroom and a bunk beds were across from it, so that probably made it longer. This was just bedroom and the bathroom and the kitchen. Maybe that's it was just a little so bit. So there's a thirty-four footers and but a thirty-six footers. But the twenty-nine, that the, the but it seemed just as big, and right. I liked it. I liked it a lot. It was right. nice. Yeah. It was pretty. I think he was like, oh, it's the color. I think you guys like the color. I did like the color. Yeah, but the color it was really it was a pretty it looked kind of like farm decor cabinet tree in there. But everything was very light sense. tone painted too. Yeah. And that the might tile have made and it everything seem was bigger because it was yeah, maybe it was that's lighter. yeah, cuz it was know. lighter. Maybe that's what it was. But it I liked it. It was really nice and it was surprising that it was 29 feet, but I think that I think it would have worked for us as well. Which would be nice. Because it's but we'd have not to pull as the long as 40 feet. Right. Well, that's what we were thinking to begin with. Yeah. Um, anyway. Enough for the RV talk. Anyway. Yes, we have a lot to figure out, as you can tell. So, no, we did not buy an RV. We just enjoyed our time looking at them and dreaming about what we need. And now we have to sit down and figure out what do we absolutely need? What can we... Um, what, what should we get? Right. So. We'll figure it out. Yes. Uh, and the RVs were flying off the shelves. Oh my gosh. So we've bought houses. We've looked at houses in the past. And we know those real estate agents. It's like, oh, what? Yeah. You'd like to come out and look at the house too? Oh, you have money in hand. You want to buy it today? And you know it's all a scam just to try to get you to rush. When they're yeah. cranking up a front end loader to pull the RV out to give the keys to the other owner. And you see the people waiting for the keys. <laughs> They were selling yeah. RVs on that parking lot left and right yesterday. Yeah, I think we saw like five or six go. While we were there. Right. And one, he had the keys in his hand and uh, two people showed up that looked like like maintenance people. And they just jumped right in front of us. Didn't say excuse me, didn't say anything. He just jumped right in front of us and climbed aboard. And then when the sales guy walked on board, he just turned around, put his, you know, his tail between his legs and he's like, that one just sold. Yeah. Let's go, let's go over here. Yeah. And then they, they put it on that front end loader or whatever and took it up front. Yeah. Yeah. So. They were flying. It's not like when we bought cars and that guy in the front office is like, oh, yeah, yeah whatever car I was looking at. And was, oh, you're interested in the Highlander? Yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Give me your information. Uh-huh. Yeah. So do you have, you know, a payment plan? Over the top. And it was over Come the top. on by. You can, you can test drive. I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, because I just test drove that one. Sure. I'm sure. Maybe somebody really did, but it seemed odd. Like, I, 
I wouldn't have been surprised if the phone started ringing while it was in his hand. <laughs> That'd have been great. <laughs> but anyway, everybody's saying, the guy was saying that everybody is buying RVs right now. Our neighbor was talking about getting an RV, talking to Natalie about, um, our other neighbor was talking about getting an RV because just both his wife and him are working um, at home. The kids are virtually homeschooling pretty much. They're only going to school twice a day, twice, twice a week anyway. So if they get it's an RV, yeah. they could just go on the road and just see things. And Everybody's doing everything virtually. Why not? And so, yeah. So, anyway. RVs are all the rage right now. We need it for another reason. Right. Same reason as homeschooling. Right. We're not trying to be one of the cool kids. We've been talking about this for years. Right. And we've been doing homeschool since before it was cool. But right. this year, when I go to <laughs> order my homeschool stuff because everybody's homeschooling, I had books that were back ordered. And I just got in the mail. We I was just like, got man. We just got a couple books this week. So we've been in the school two months now and a couple books just came in. It's like right. that's never happened before. Yeah. So Yeah, we we're trendsetters, baby. Ah uh, yeah. Anyway, so um We're a country. Fort Country was cool, right? There you go. <laughs> so we talked about uh RVs to death. I got notes here. The babies are two months old. You're finally cleared from the doctor to to work out. Yeah. How's that going? I am working out. You've seen me do it. I have seen you not do much. Ouch. It doesn't look like it's a hard workout. Okay, it might not look like it, but you carry twins and see how weak your stomach is by the time you're done. And then you do that workout and see if it doesn't make you sore. Hey, I'm glad you're working out. And it's good. Yeah, it's doing something. I'm thinking after we get home from... Thanksgiving, though, I'll go up to the next level. But it's a postpartum workout, and it has three levels. I've been doing the first one to start out and to get things going. And it first time I did it, I was like, oh, my gosh. I told Wes, I said, I know it doesn't look like much. It really doesn't look like much. But what I like about it is it's only 15 minutes. So usually the babies are quiet for 15-minute, you know, 15-minute stretch. I can get it done. But it's... I can feel it. It's working. So, I mean, and it's not, and the reason I like that it's 15 minutes is not something that I have to go and be like, okay, I need a full hour of time and I need Wes to, you know, watch him for a full hour of time when he needs to go feed animals or do whatever and he hey, can't I'm gonna do take it for two. Let me check on the babies. You keep talking. For, you know. They might hear this thump. An hour and, and have to... <sighs> You know, the whole prep for a whole hour and sweating that much and everything and doing all that. So this workout I like because it's a postpartum one. It's for women who just had babies so that you're not doing something with your abs that aren't, um, that isn't good for you to be doing, even though you're cleared for a workout. Um, I didn't know, but you're really not supposed to be doing ab, you know, sit-ups, even after being approved for working out from from your doctor after you've had a baby doing sit-ups can really mess up your stomach I didn't know that but um I do now I've seen it I'm I'm in Facebook groups um for moms of multiples and twin groups and working out after pregnancy and everything like that and so I've seen it around a lot and then also this postpartum workout DVD has said that sit-ups just aren't good to do after pregnancy even when you've been approved to work out. So um, I like that it's something that's specific for me and that I can do. And it isn't so crazy um, long. It's nice and short. And on that note, I've got to go check on babies. Wes, it's all you. Speaking of babies, we had to take a break because ours were screaming. Yep. I tried to get Wes just to keep on talking, but he said to take a break. So well, that's all right. That's thought all right. it would take longer. Anyway, so you it's work out, right. you like it. When are you going to level two? Because level one seems very wimpy. Well, we're out. God, yeah, I, as I say, you carry twins for nine months and see what you can do when you're done. Golly day. Anyway, I'm trying my best. I'm doing the best that I can. I really am. But anyway, um, I'm going to go to level two. We're, we're after Thanksgiving. All right. <laughs> we're visiting my parents for Thanksgiving. When we get back from there... I'll, I'll start level two. The baby's face. <laughs> yeah. So um, with the babies at the shows and everything, I don't know if we talked about it, them in, in October at the farm, 
they did remarkably well in the shows. Yeah. They, they slept the whole shows. I mean, that was awesome. They're, Thank you, babies. Yeah, they're, they're knock on wood, fairly easy babies. And like we said, they only get upset, you know, when they're hungry. So the only time they cried during a show was when they were hungry. So they, my, they just they don't mind. They go to sleep in their car seats, and they just sit there and are in the show. And, and when, when they're my, awake, they just like sucking on their binkies and looking around. When my pre-show music came on, it was really loud. They didn't flinch. No. Nope. The show announcement came on, snoring. They didn't care. Yeah. Uh, they took a final bow at the end of every show. The audience ate that up. Yeah. Our first show um, we did at the farm, we told them, all right, our babies are, what, a week old. Today yeah. is their first family bow. Get your cameras out. And everybody, I mean, at that farm on day one, there's probably 60 people there. I bet 40 cameras came out and all snap pictures. Yeah. Now, we only got like eight emails, so we have eight copies of the same picture from different people, but... We didn't get all 40 of them. No. But all those people thought it was pretty awesome to be a part of that. Yeah, and every time we did it, you'd hear the, aww. Because <laughs> they'd been in their car seat, so they couldn't quite see them. And so you bring them out. And, you know, they're small. I mean, they're still small for two-month-old babies because they're twins. So they're still little babies. So people are like, oh, they're so tiny. They're so cute. All right, go ahead. There and I be, agree. They are cute. There might be somebody on here that wants to know. What's that? What's their sizes now? How much do they weigh now? Oh, um, yeah. They I don't just think had... of that stuff. I would never ask a lady, <laughs> how much does that baby weigh? But we hear that all day long. People are yeah. really interested in it, so give them the information. So they're two weeks old. I mean, two weeks. Two months old today, because it's the 25th. But they were eight weeks old last Friday, and they had their eight-week checkup. And Lex is now seven pounds, 14 ounces. So he weighs what Lana did when she was born <laughs> and Julian is seven pounds even so they each gained over a pound in a month so the doctor was very happy and I was very happy and so they don't have another checkup till next month which I'm sure they're happy about because they got shots <laughs> and they're both in our arms right now so if you yes. hear grunting after that break we just went in and put them in our arms yeah <clears throat> oh, oh that was a burp there you, you got go. that on microphone all right so um <laughs> Also, talking about the babies, we really wanted to do it up for uh, Halloween. We had a great month, and Natalie's like, it's COVID time. Don't even do a Halloween party. And I'm like, no, it doesn't matter about money and stuff, because we spend a lot of money on our parties. It's about the memories and thinking about it later on and looking back at the footage and looking back at the pictures and knowing you're creating those memories for Lana. And that's, I'm not trying to be corny, but that is priceless. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So, um... This year. And plus, his costumes, he didn't want to have to save them for next year. Well, he wanted it, to do them this year. It was so, yeah, it was so right on par. Yeah. So we wanted to be Penn and Teller after winning Fool Us this March. Um, I was Teller because I was short. Natalie was Penn because she's taller than me. I got little um, <laughs> hair dye spray stuff to make my hair blondish, like, dirty blonde or yeah. blondish. Looks pretty good. I drew a goatee on Natalie. Yeah. I gave her a pair of uh, uh, spy goggles, spy glasses that look like glasses, but, I mean, big frames. Yeah. And um, we both had matching suits on, so we were Penn and Teller. Lana was Allison, Allison Hannigan from the show Fool Us. And um, our friend Amy Bowling said, why don't you make the kids half dollars? Well, that was one of the things people thought. They thought I had multiple half dollars in the show. So I said, I can't make them both half dollars. But what if they're twins? So one's heads and one's tails. Yep. That way there's really only one and a half dollar there. Yeah. So um So that was easy. <laughs> yeah, we just printed out these half dollars and duct taped it to their white onesie. onesie. Yeah. yeah it's perfect. Yeah. But um It's pretty cute. Anyway, after after we had our party and we had fun. Not a lot of people showed up. We invited like fifty and I think eleven showed up. Yeah. Um so we had food coming out of our ears. Natalie always still had makes, a good time. Natalie always makes turkey chili and makes two vats of it to share with 50 people and mummy dogs and all kinds of snacks and goodies. She had me eating chili for lunch and dinner for a week straight. Well, she said, you don't have to. <laughs> I still gave a ton of it to the chickens. 
Well, I I helped him feed. I mean, I helped him feed. I helped him eat the chili. Um, you know, I had chili at the party. I had it the next day. And then I'm going, the babies are really fussy. And we finally connected two and two that maybe I shouldn't be eating the chili because I think it's making the babies upset, gassy. So quit eating the chili, and that solved that problem. So it was all West because Lana does not like chili. So it was up to West to eat all that chili. And he did a good job. He put well, a dent in it. I still gave a ton to the chickens. Yeah, but... And they loved it. Turkey chili for the chickens. Yeah. But um, anyway... I put it on Facebook and Twitter the next day that, you know, hey, here's our costumes. And I tagged um, Allison and Penn and Teller in the, in the thing on Twitter. And Penn wrote back. And what did he say, Natalie? Hold on here. What are you grunting for, baby? He said, you know, you're getting to be my favorite people in the world. Beautiful, Wes. So our understudy problem is solved. <laughs> Man, I saw that and him writing back to me. And it was still like the first time I ever heard from him. I, I'm like a little schoolgirl, and it, <laughs> I just got all giddy. I showed Natalie. I love that tweet so much that I actually printed it out, and it's hanging. And I framed it, and it's hanging in my magic room. And I hung it with uh, pictures of us dressed as Penn and Teller. So. Yeah. Penn saying we're getting to be his favorite people. Come on. And I Somebody will. Loves I will. This. I would totally love to be their understudy. I'll wear that outfit again. Not a problem. I'll even I'll even try and figure out how to sound like him. <laughs> the problem is going to be Wes not saying anything. That's going to be the problem. Yeah. <laughs> she kept calling me out at the party. I'm like, no, it's a costume. I don't have to be 100% correct on this. Nobody's judging Oh, he me. wasn't 100% correct 100% of the time. Baby. He was talking. Talking, talking, talking Sorry, too much. Guys. This is Lex. This is... Uh, this is the youngest. He just wants to talk in the podcast. Yeah. Well, get it out, son. Get it out. What's the matter? Are you better now? Yeah. yeah. We have stuff to do. We have stuff to do. Can we talk for 10 more minutes? Can we talk for 10 more minutes? They, did, they did good at the shows. Let's see if, oh, we, can, gonna, let's see if we can do 10 more minutes. All right. All right. All right, here. We're doing a baby shuffle here live on the air. Sorry, guys. Anyway. Um, another show we had recently was uh, a show we did in Crewe, Virginia. Now, Crewe, Virginia is like an hour and a half south of us. And we do a lot of corporate shows. And they're like, all right, well, we're having a steak dinner and we'll invite you and filet mignon and you guys eat. How many's in your group? We'll have you guys set up. We'll have a table set for you. And it's really never what you think it is. Um, for us... We'd rather get in, get out, and just whatever. Not that we don't want to be around people. It just takes away from the the wink, wink, the celebrity factor. They get to know you and hang out with you for two hours. And then it's it's weird having them clap for you on stage or, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It breaks that wall. I don't know. So um, this guy was 75 years old that booked us. And he told Natalie that they're doing a seafood dinner. And he really wants us there. And it's a sweet old man. And Natalie has a place in her heart for sweet old men. She really does. <laughs> and um, he said, please come and eat. And Natalie's like, you know what? The show's an hour and a half away. And she's trying to do timing on the breastfeed and everything. And she said, if we do it right, I can get there. I can breastfeed. We can eat. And then set up and take our time setting up. Because it's not like we have a lot of shows going on right now with COVID. So that's what we were going to do. And it was on a Thursday. So, I mean... There was nothing going on. Right. And we left the house at 4.30 in the afternoon. And we headed south. For an hour and a half trip, we headed an hour south. Mm-hmm. And we got to this town called Farmville. And these cops started flying by us. And they just parked sideways. And cars were coming in the other direction towards us over the bridge. So we thought there was just a car wreck. And when's it going to be our turn to go? When's it going to be our turn to go? They never let us have a turn. Mm-mm. So, I mean, we were there 20 minutes, 30 minutes waiting. We were there for a while, yeah. And finally somebody said, the road is closed. The water just now came over the road. Over the, yeah, over the bridge. We have had some serious, serious flooding uh, here in Virginia past uh, month. And 
this Thursday night show just culminated in all of that water washing over that bridge. They said yeah. that hadn't happened in 50 years. Yeah. So we have Waze on our phone. That's the app that we use. And it usually says if there's a roadblock. But since it just happened, we weren't updated about it. So uh, we were trying to figure out another way to do it. But every time we told the thing we didn't want to go across the bridge, the app was like, oh, yeah, you do. That's the, that's the best way to go. That's the best route. And Natalie was trying to tell it, no, road closed. And the app was like, mm, no, go this way and then turn around here and then you can go right over the bridge. And we're like, we can't go over the bridge. So we just pulled over and some lady helped us out and she gave us directions. She said, all right, you got to backtrack about 45 minutes. To Cumberland. And then you can go, you know, whatever and go down this other road. And we did that. And we turned on a road and there was a sign on the side of the road. Two and a half miles up, road closed. So I looked on the navigation and two and a half miles up, there's a blue line that crosses the road. So that river must have been washed out. So I was like, Wes, what are we going to do? So In the meantime, I'm calling the guy every time we hit a, hit a stop. And he is just a sweet, sweet old man. He's like... We will be here till midnight. I've seen your show before. I've told them how great you are. We will be here till midnight. You just keep on coming. I said, all right, well, I don't know where I'm at now, but we're trying to figure it out. I think my wife has another way of doing it. We're going to try this. Yeah. We had to take out the old timey map because, once again, I could not figure it out on that Waze navigation. It wouldn't let me close that road. I I don't know why. So... um I told Wes, I said, just the only problem with looking at this map is I can't zoom in. There's no zoom on this map. <laughs> but we figured it out, and we figured out which way to go. And then once I got far enough at, out, um, I tried to put it in navigation again. And then we just prayed every time that we got close to a blue line that <laughs> it wasn't close. But the and we funny finally thing, made it there. And the funny thing was that Natalie's boobs were hurting because now she's yeah. super late on feeding the kids. We're an hour and a half past feeding time, which thank goodness they're good riding guys. They just sleep in the car. Yeah, so they didn't the get car. mad until we stopped and they realized, hmm, Lana I'm said, hungry. Lana said, I'm hungry. And this is right after Halloween. All I could do is throw a bag of Halloween candy at it. That's all <laughs> yeah. I could do. Because we're on back roads in the middle of nowhere. Had. Yep. So, anyway, we got there at 8. And the show was supposed to start at 8.30. So, I told Wes, I said, you're going to have to go and set up as much as you can. And I got to feed these guys. So, and then it worked out. I set up the show. And Lana is trying to help me. And Natalie's in the back in her other car feeding the boys. And I'm texting and calling her. And she's like, oh. Wes is in a bad mood. Wes, she calls it pre-show pissy. Yep. She says Wes is in a bad mood. Wes, is, and I can't answer. I have a baby in both hands. I can't answer the phone anyway. I couldn't. So eventually, I had to run down this out of the building and run down to the lower parking lot and be like, Natalie. And she's like, Wes, I am trying. No, Natalie. Wes, I am trying. You listen. And after I'm done, he pooped all over himself, and I had to change the diaper. Yes, Natalie, but here. I had to change the whole outfit, not just a diaper. It was. It, came at the wrong time. But I'm trying to tell you that I'm good. I think I have the show set up. Is there anything else I might have forgotten? She wouldn't let me get words out because she just knew I was mad at her. Well, he seemed frantic because he came running. And then he was like, people are just staring at me. They're just staring at me. I'm like, Wes, you should be used to that. You're the magician. <laughs> They're not staring at me in the right way, Natalie. I can tell. I can tell. But, but um, it, worked out. it worked out fine. They all enjoyed the show. We had a good time. It was... Yeah, it was fine. But Natalie... It was just crazy getting there. And because this wasn't the farm show, um, Natalie had some extra milk in bottles that she'd brought with us, just in case they got fussy, because we were going to do a big illusion at this place. Yeah, and the timing would work... If we had gotten there on time, the timing for feedings would have worked, that it would have been time to eat towards the end of the show. And so I knew they were going to be cranky. So I was like, well... We just pop a bottle in them, give them a little snack so they can eat, eat. But it ended up topping them off after having a short feeding. So. Well, they had short feedings. They did the show. Everything was great. I looked over and Lana was like on cloud nine giving a bottle. Because Natalie's always with the babies. There's no reason to have a bottle. So this was the first time she got to actually give the boys a bottle. And she was just smiling ear to ear. And look at me. Aren't you proud of me? 
she was so proud of herself, but she wanted pats on the back as well. It was very cute. She did it really good. It was so sweet of her. So, anyway, I, I think we've pretty much wrapped up everything we've been going on. There's not a lot of shows, guys. Not a lot to talk about. But, um, Jewel TV, we have our, our television show on Jewel TV. Um, tonight's episode is episode 11 already. We've done 11 episodes on there already. It seems like yesterday it started. Yeah. And um, this one's called New Home, New Adventures. It airs at 7 p.m. It's on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Jewel TV app, and tons of other places. It's in over 100 million households. You can find it. Also, on January 22nd, we will be doing our full evening Magic and Illusion show live on stage, but zoomed into the comfort of your living room. What that means is this isn't a regular Zoom show that we've been doing where we put up backdrops and do it in our living room. We're going to be doing our full-scale illusion show on a stage, and we'll film it and zoom it into your living room. This is a fundraiser for a couple different elementary schools, and the proceeds will truly help them out. Uh, for tickets or more information on this event, check out my events page at WesEisley.com. And, um... See you, See you next, next week. week. Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by Express Copy and Graphics. Mention promo code Wes Isley to get 10% off. Their website is expresscopy.com. That's X-P-R-E-S-S dash C-O-P-Y dot com. They do it all. Copies, banners, signs, vehicle wraps, promo items, practically anything you need printed, they can do it for you. These guys are great. Check them out. Check us out online at wesisley.com and patreon.com forward slash Wes underscore Isley for behind the scenes videos, blooper videos, never before seen footage, discounts on merchandise, magic trick tutorials, and more. That's Wes Isley spelled W-E-S-I-S-E-L-I.